Second in line podcast. I'm the host with the most. One more Sanchez and joining me live on Zoom is the owner of XCOM Fitness. Welcome to the show, Mike. How you doing today? Doing pretty good, man. And thank you for having me again. We've had previous conversations before and I always love talking to you, brother. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, when I talk to you, your story is amazing. For those that don't know, can you start off just by telling the viewers what happened on the day of January the 28th? Okay. Just to be completely transparent, I accidentally shot and killed one one of my best friends, James McCleary, when I was on the way to commit another crime. I was actually wanting to go kill my ex-wife's husband at the time. And it was mainly because, I, again, I wanted to blame somebody about me losing my son, my wife, and all these things. And I just wanted to harm somebody. But really the person to blame was me. And in, in the turns of trying to do all that, I ended up in a tragic accident trying to disarm a gun. And, uh, and it was aiming towards my friend. And the hammer slipped out of my finger. And it, it, shot, it shot him in the right shoulder upper chest. And he died from that. And that's something that, that I, something I have to live with every day. And especially when it comes to when it came to forgiving myself. I had a hard time with that. And, uh, but I learned something through it is is that and god had took something that that tra some tragic something that tra tragically happened and made some good come out of it and i i feel like two people died that day me and my friend james and so i find that it is very important to live for two people because he's not it's here today good. yeah yeah so, so when that happened at the time you were how old i was 21. 21. 21. now this is how many years ago 10 years it is 10, 10, years. 10 years. January 28th was 10 years. Okay. Your mindset that you were back then, you just mentioned that you wanted to blame people. And now that you're older, you know that it was you that had that problem. But in that moment, when you were 21, how did you figure out you were the one to blame for yourself and not blame it on other people? What made you better? Since a young age, I've been in trouble. So I just got to give you a little back history. Since I've been in and out of handcuffs since I was 12 years old and I made a, a ton of mistakes. And I was always like uh, drowning myself in drugs and alcohol and numbing my, numbing my pain and my mistakes with alcohol and drugs. And so I had never been really sober. And when everything happened, it was just like so traumatic because uh, like from selling drugs to robbing people, to robbing houses, to ruining so many lives. Like I always just set aside the pain of those mistakes and the repercussions. But sooner or later, you have to face the music. You're going to have to stand under everything that you did. And you have the freedom to choose to do anything that you want in this world. But you don't have the freedom to choose the consequences, nor how long they last. And so when everything happened, I had to take full blame of that. And the part where I really had to learn to grow up is, man, when everything happened, and just to be honest with you, I was scared because I, I went from having to try to fight for my friend James's life. And when they, when I found out that he died, I went to a criminal mindset and this is where that was very pivotal. I went to a criminal mindset all over again because I knew that cops were involved. And I was like, man, now, now I feel like I'm going to have to fight for my life. And all I knew was that selfish thinking. Like I, I even, when I was in questioning, I even lied and said that he had shot himself at first, but it was because I was scared. I was scared because I didn't want to face the ramifications of my actions and i was scared to to have to go to prison for life or, that's all i ever thought about you all you knew was murder and when people murder somebody or when people somebody dies in an accident whatever it may be they go to prison and they spend their lives in prison that's what i was thinking and so i had to come to to the realization i had to be true for myself and so when i was in that sex cell with my friend's blood all over me and come becoming sober when i became sober like it was an overwhelming ocean of emotions. Every last mistake and harm I ever did, I felt all of that waves of emotions. And I started calling, like crying, just bawling, curled up, crying. And it was just, I was a hot mess. But God saved me in that moment. God, I begged for God to help me. And when you ask God for help, you think that how he's going to answer those prayers is going to be in like these bow ties and, and these little boxes of things that you would think of him helping you as right when you ask for a prayer but it's his ways are not our are our, our ways and his words are not our words and so he helped me but it wasn't in the fashion that i thought he had got to you. from myself got you you and i talked about this before now when you mentioned that you found god at that moment how did you know that he helped you when everything was against the wall 
and it was the burning bush experience. I had, I told you about this previously, but when mm-hmm. I was trying to rush my friend to the hospital and there was just a, an insane amount of traffic in front of me. And I knew that like his life was like in a matter of minutes or seconds that could save him. And I was like, man, I'm never going to, I'm never going to make it to this hospital. And then something overcame me. It was like, God, talking to me he gave me like a sense of peace he's like hey look i got this trust me pull over and so i as soon as like that 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 hit me i see an ambulance go this way and so i immediately pull over and when i go to pull over that was when i i left it in god's hands and things didn't work out the way that that i was thinking that they were going to work out like he was going to be saved and i was trying to save him and it didn't work out that way but i still had to trust god in the midst of all that and that was the hard part Gotcha. How many years were you incarcerated for, for? I did every day of an eight-year sentence. Eight years. Okay. In those eight years, the person that you are today, what did you learn? So I would love to tell you that even when you get, when God saves you and you give your life to God, that you're going to not make mistakes. However, that was not the case. It was throughout that entire eight years, it was a growing process. So although I gave my life to God and I was clean of drugs, and alcohol, I still had internal demons that I was facing with. And that, that came with everything you could think of, whether it was gangs, gambling, hustling, whatever it may be. I, and I was still a real aggressive person. And so I had over eight years, I learned how to correct those things through trial and error. The first one was language. I got into it with a, an older gentleman and I called him everything but a child of God wanting to fight him. I, I really wanted him to hit me in the mouth. And uh, he looked at me and he said, do you know why you're cussing at me right now? Because you don't have anything educated to say. And I, I like, I, I almost blew a fuse, but I was upset because he was right. And it, and I felt like a little kid being chastised by, by parents. And I felt ashamed. And I said, you know what? I never want to feel that way again. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to, I'm going to study. And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make something with my life. Because I dropped out of my senior year in high school. And it was stupid mistakes that you make. But again, you don't get to choose the consequences. But you can try to make it right. I, I am a part of a program. And it's also my, you know, my profession right now. So I am a life caddy, which is the equivalent of a case manager. And I work for the prison entrepreneurship program. And my last three years in prison, they really helped me in a major way. They provided me with the necessary resources, tools, and the skills so that I could de-gangsterize, so that I could learn how to live on the outside. I learned how to be an authentic man, a man that follows God, a servant leader, and I gained invaluable skills. And I also learned how to build a business plan, how to present a business plan, and how to sell it. And upon release, I was offered a job with them to help assist with guys that come out of prison my brothers that go through the program and i was offered that job and i took it because i wanted to be able to give back to the same program that so graciously helped me become the greatest version of myself and i'm and i'm still not the greatest version of myself but they're they're there for me and, and we're family that's the biggest thing and i love it from day one i pick guys up when they get out of prison and i'm with them every step of the way helping them become employable and trying to provide and, and breathe life into them so that they can be successful out here in all facets of life, not just getting a job. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your business and how did you come up with the name? My business is I'm a personal trainer by passion. I love what I do. And the name of it is it's X-Cons. So, over here, right? Hot, right there. Oh, the name yeah. of my business is called X-Cons. And the whole reason behind that is because... Not only are you getting trained by an ex-felon, but it's somebody, an ex-felon that changes life. And the word ex-cons actually means somebody that is no longer a convict, somebody that was delivered from. Like Merriam-Webster, one of the definitions was no longer past tense and to be delivered from. Now, I took that and ran with it because I, heard, I saw the prefix ex and then the word con. So it means to, to not be a convict anymore. But the world sees that term as a negative one. When you hear the term ex-con, the radio, the movies, TV, they portray ex-convicts as like, man, he can never be trusted. That's somebody that he's no good. He's trash. He'll never be anything. He'll never amount to anything. And I took that to heart. I wear it like, and it's kind of it's goofy, but I, it's like a scarlet letter. And which is why I have 
the logo on my back, a big red X on my back. And because what the world wants for my bad, God is going to use for the good, the good of many. Because there are so many people that make mistakes like, and, and that they wish that they could take it back. And, but they're frowned upon because they're an ex convict, not for what they're doing now, but for what they did in their past. And I know that everybody in this life makes mistakes. Some may have just gotten caught. Some may not be as severe as others, but at the same point in time, man, I never understood what freedom was until I was in prison. And I never understood about marginalizing somebody until I was in prison and being marginalized. What is something that your workout programs differ from a lot? Cause I've seen some of the heavy hardcore stuff that you do, but now you're also doing classes uh, online, right? Through Zoom? I'm really, yeah, absolutely. And I'm really big on functional exercising. So just a little bit about functional exercising. So functional exercising is where you emulate and work out the muscles that we, you would use in your everyday life with everyday activities. And so if you train those and you emulate those same movements and activities that you would normally do in a regular day, to a certain extent, it will reduce the amount of energy you need to complete those tasks. And you'll feel like you have more energy to do things throughout the day. You'll feel more energized. You'll feel like you're a little more awake and less tired to do those normal things. And that's something that I'm big on, especially the, the functional part. And also building a community. That's that's where I differ. I would like for you to think of CrossFit. Scott, I love CrossFit. I'm a huge advocate of them. And I'm also an ad, an advocate for Con Body. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but it's like a mixture of the two. Tell me a little bit more about that. What that is. I want you to think back. Did you play sports in high school? Okay, so were you ever on like football or anything? Do you remember that? Do you remember that feeling of when you're fixing to go to a game or you made it to state and you're surrounded by people that you have gone through the grit with a team that that sense of camaraderie where hey look we did this together let's finish this together let's finish strong let's go through this and and be successful let's overcome our our obstacles that feeling is what i'm talking about when in the community and for most of us that are not in high school anymore we don't participate in things where you're a part of a team anymore so it makes you feel young again when you're working out with people that have similar goals and not just in working out, right? What I'm teaching you is thing, principles that will start to translate in every part of your life. So if I teach you to persevere through a workout, if I teach you to not give up in a workout soon enough, and you do that enough, it's going to start to translate in your work life, in your family life. You're, you're going to learn to persevere through that. You're going to learn to understand that, man, it takes going through pain to grow. It's called growing pains. It takes Ooh. not giving up to succeed. Those are things that are life skills. And everything that I train and teach somebody, you're not meant to have a personal trainer forever. And let me be clear with that. I want to give you life skills and I want to train you in specific exercises and everything else that I provide so that you can teach it to your kids. You can teach it to your family. You can teach it to your friends and continue to help other people become the greatest version of themselves. Those who are interested, where, where can we find you? You can definitely find me on my website. My brother, Ryan, he, he helped to develop my site. I gave him exactly what I wanted and he manifested it. So it's xconsfitness.com, X-C-O-N-S, fitness, F-I-T-N-E-S-S.com. Um, sorry, I was doing a uh, gang sign, not prison <laughs> sign language. I'm sorry. Like some things just do not off easily. And same thing with my lingo, but xconsfitness.com. You can definitely mm. reach me there. You can reach me at XCon Galloway, the Facebook page. You can reach me at my Instagram as well, which is XCon's Fitness. And also you can give me a call. And you know what? Even if you're not calling about personal training, you just want to find out. Or if you need somebody just to reach out to, I'm all for it, man. I'm all for making a difference in life. My number is 346-328-0037. Oh man, you putting this online? Put this online. 281-330. Hey, my number's on my website regardless. Oh, okay, uh, fair enough. Hopefully I want to see maybe a future movie, a book in the making. Do you have any plans for that? I did write one book. I wrote my book for, for my son. So I'll just a little sum. When I was locked up, I haven't seen my son since 2012. And I still haven't seen him after being out two and a half years. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to make sure that my son knew about me just in case I died. And so I wrote a book about my life and I want to give it to him one day. So that way he can know like the highs and lows of my life, everything that I love, everything, my mistakes, everything. But I do, I would like to write one one day. Are you still writing in that book right now as we speak for your son? 
You know what? And thank you for holding me accountable. I filled that one up and I, I have it and I carry it with me every day just in case I run into him like, hey, here you go. But uh, no, I don't. And I, I should be more adamant about that. So thank you for pulling me up on that. But I do make videos. Every video I make, it's because I want to leave a thumbprint so that my son, if he wants to look for me, he can find me. There you go. Before I let you go, I'm going to put you on the spot. Quick questions, quick answers. Okay. All right. What is your go-to karaoke song? All right, so this one's pretty easy. It would have to either be Shake It Off by Taylor Swift or okay. 22 by Taylor Swift. Huh? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. What is your hype song when you're working out? What song puts you, what, what song gets you hype? Definitely, you're going to laugh at this one. Katy Perry's Roar. Like, if I was a, a professional boxer and I was coming out, heavyweight title champion song, that Katy Perry Roar, man, I'll, that'll get you jumped. That'll get you jumping for sure. What is your late night snack? Uh, I'm going to have to say Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. All right. And then the very last question, if someone were to play you and make a movie about you, who would be the leading role star? Say, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. Somebody that I, would, I thought about this, probably Taylor Laudner, dude. He's all right with me. All right. There you go. You want, you want to bring him back from the movie? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mike, look, man. I'm glad to see your success. You're one of the few people that I can sit here and say your life turned around. And now I'm always about positivity. So, again, I thank you for your time and Anything you need, just let me know. We live in the same state, so. Likewise, brother. You take care. Have a good one.